are the folks from the Puget Sound Military Vehicle Collectors Club. Yes, these are private vehicles that you see here. We've got an M274A5 Mule leading the pack there. That is Jeff High at the controls all the way from Seattle, Washington. He was eight years with the United States Cavalry. He's collecting military since December 8th of 1941. No, he's not that old. But his dad picked pieces of a Japanese Zero from Pickham Field in Hawaii. And that's what got him going. This uh, mule has a 106 millimeter recoilless rifle on it. It was mainly used in Vietnam. But well, what's really cool about this thing, as it goes by, take a look. It has four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering as well. So when he goes around the corner, you'll see the front wheel steer and the rear wheel steers as well. Isn't that cool? Chris Brown is at the controls of that Humvee. He's the president of the Puget Sound Military Vehicle Collectors Club. And this is an armored version of the Humvee set up for the M250 caliber gun that's uh, up on the turret. Used for field transportation and for hauling tow missiles. And of course, the classic Jeep. The one up on the berm right now is a 1951 M38 Willys Jeep. Carl Harrington is the proud owner of that machine from Edmonds, Washington. He runs an auto repair shop. There's a hot guest that includes his family's 1952 MG Roadster. He's a volunteer diver with the Seattle Aquarium. How cool is that? Bought this thing last year and slowly being brought back to life. The unit markings are the 3rd Armored Division, 2nd Battalion, 48th Infantry Regiment, which is his father's regiment. That is that vehicle right in front of you there. And the other Jeep that's roaring around here too, that was a little older. And it is in beautiful, perfect condition. Caution left hand. Uh, over 8,300 kitten shots were built, mostly by the NSU Motorwerk AG of Germany. Crew of two had quarter inch thick armor, strong enough to withstop small caliber bullets, especially at ranges beyond a few hundred meters. This particular one that we have here today was built by the White Border Company of Cleveland, Ohio. And here comes the half track now, and of course the famous thing with the half track is you don't steer them, you aim them down the road. Stewart. Stewart was the first American crew tank to be engaged in combat in World War II. First version designed in Cabin 3 went into production in 1941. And you notice exhaust systems weren't a big deal on these tanks. You hear a little bottle away. Named after Civil War Confederate General Jeff Stewart. Tank was designed for speedy scouting as well as an infantry support vehicle. The improved version of the vehicle with a revised hull and twin Cadillac engines was eventually designed for the M5. Both the M3 and the M5 carried a 37 millimeter gun, which was by most accounts rather underpowered against German. official name of the Yacht Monster 38. The hex of loosely translates to the most heavy tank in the Red Army service, but designers struck a winning balance with this particular tank, equipping the medium tank with a large cannon, thick sloping armor, while still allowing for mobility and speed. This was America's primary tank through the last decade of the Cold War. 
created as an improved version of the M48 Captain. The M60 was equipped with a bigger gun and an updated engine. Over 15,000 examples were built by the Chrysler Corporation and Detroit Arsenal Tank Plant from 1961 to 1987. I love the smell of diesel exhaust in the morning. Though too late to serve in Vietnam, Israeli versions of the M60 fought in the 1970s.